Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Rudder Lessons and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And today it is my honor to be joined by Joseph Cortana. He has a brand called Six Sense Parfum. He recently re-released three of his best-selling fragrances from the late 2000s. They are number 87, Ascent, and Urban Tropicalia. We're gonna be chatting about all three of these fragrances, and I also wanna mention that if you are interested in discovering these fragrances, I'm gonna be leaving a link down below to where you can check them out, but for today only, on Labor Day, there's going to be a code for 20% off, and the code is BEST Indie, B E S T I N D I E. It's not case sensitive, one word, best indie. Today is the only day that this code is going to be valid. I'm not making commission on this code, but he and I chatted about this and we wanted to give a special offer to the viewers of the Red Lessons channel if you are interested in purchasing any of these fragrances. Once again, Best Indie is the code for 20% off. It is only valid today on Labor Day. So I'm hoping that you take something of value from this video. So let's go ahead and start the chat. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And today I'm joined by the wonderful Joseph Cortana from Six Sense Parfum. How's it going, Joseph? Hey, I'm good. Good morning to you. Uh, nice, bright, fresh in this Labor Day weekend. It's got yeah. a shower. I feel good. I'm ready to chat with you about perfumes. That's awesome. And it's always a pleasure. You know, Joseph and I have met up in the city many times before. You live in New York, right? I live in New Jersey. Yeah. So yeah. it seems yeah. like I'm always making the trip into New York. And I want to thank you for always taking your time to meet up and chat and attend these events together. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's always my pleasure. And uh, it was really nice hanging out in the park with you last time. And, you know, the first day we met via Eugene, you know, Eugene Ratkin from Style Zeitgeist was great, you know. So the flash intro it was a fun interview, you know, and I appreciate you read a really lovely story in Style Zeitgeist about, you know, my uh, my my debut namesake collection uh, from Cortana, uh, Les Potions Fatales. So I really appreciate that. It was a lovely article and very well informed, well written. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know, I smell so many fragrances all the time. And whenever I find fragrances that really appeal to me, really resonate with me, and I can tell there's quality behind them, there's a, a very high level of creativity. And I can tell as a creative director, you know what you're doing, right? And you've worked on <laughs> both try. brands. They're both award-winning brands, right? That's, that's important. <laughs> yeah, you know, but the thing is, every time I set out to do a fragrance that I've done, 38 now it's crazy in you know about 12 years um you know you know you never know how it's going to be received the but we just try to do the best we can do yeah. uh with ev every time i try to i set out to do a fragrance i'm trying to make the next angel by terry mugler i really try to make fragrances that don't smell like anything that are super unique and the challenge along the whole way is really to get the most out of the nose the perfumer and the most out of the visionary, especially for Sixth Sense, because these these were not my visions necessarily. Right. I was the curator, and I brought the talent in and put them together to see what would you know come out of that and help to shape it. I kind of merchandised it in that sense, you know. Um, so, and then we put it out into the world, and we see what happens. And you know, f with, with Sixth Sense, I, I, we're very blessed to have. They've all been pretty well received. None were really you know, slammed as failures, thank God. They all actually sold pretty well, too, around the world, on average. That's so, amazing. And, 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 and then some of them won prizes, so we got really lucky in that regard. When you get that kind of validation, it's wonderful. Um, although we don't set out for that. Like, you know, when we, when we, when we won um, the Fifi for Best Indie in, in, for our third series of Six Sense in 2011, yeah. Man, I flew, I flew into the freaking festival from Bali. I was in Indonesia wow. on holiday, and, and my former partner couldn't get there. And so I was like, all right, I'm just going to change my flight. I flew 28 hours to be there, and I was just kind of like, la-di-da. I was in space, because I'm like so <laughs> super like jet-lagged. <laughs> and it's just a weird surreal. And you know, it's like, I, we didn't expect to win. And suddenly I, we win. I didn't have a speech rehearsed. I had to go on stage and I'm staring at like Paz de la Herda and Mary J. Blige and, and um, uh, Halle Berry. They're in the front row staring back at me. It's so weird. <laughs> anyway, we don't do it for the, any of this stuff. We do it for the pure love of it and the challenge and uh, the creativity and to blow people's minds. 
I get off, not for money. I don't even make money from this. Come on, let's be realistic. It's perfect. I know, I know. You, you know how it is. I get off from blowing people's mind. So if I've blown your mind in the past, you have, listen, I'm wearing Urban Tropicalia right now and I'm getting whiffs of it. And I think I mentioned this in my review. I love the fragrance. It's very nostalgic in the sense that it kind of reminds me of peach rings. But yeah. you encounter peach and apricot and these fruity ingredients so often in designer fragrances. But like you said, your venture was to create something that has never been smelled before. Yes. Something that's unique. So there was a certain type of sweetness that's in this fragrance that is not like any other peach dominant fragrance or apricot dominant fragrance that I've smelled before. So I really admire what you're doing and like the awards, I mean, they are a big deal. I can see what you mean. They're more of a side effect or a byproduct of being a curator and putting these fragrances out into the universe and hoping that they resonate with somebody. But at the end of the day, like that's a huge thing. Like you were the first award winning niche brand in America. That's huge. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we were just so surprised by that. And of course, it opened up a lot of doors, um, <laughs> a lot of bad doors, too. I should I, I should probably clear, <laughs> mention clearly. <laughs> but, you know, exposure is exposure and it's good. And uh, anyway, what matters is here we are in 2020 and I'm, you know, I'm putting them out again. And, and I'm still here with my health and alive and well, thank God. And I want to stay that way. Yeah. And I hope everyone else is that's watching this and that COVID has not affected them negatively, you know, because it's, it's a tough time right now in humanity. But we all hang in there, but, you know, be strong together, get through this, you know. Um, we definitely will. And Joseph and I were actually talking off camera about how, you know, releasing fragrances in the age of COVID has become quite the challenge because oftentimes you rely on these brick and mortar stores and installations rather than, you know, doing digital promotion. And so, you know, I'm here as a YouTuber. I'm very happy to help you. I'm very happy to make videos on fragrances I'm really passionate about. And so I know now we just have the initial three, which are number 87, Ascend and Urban Tropicalia. But obviously we do have plans to release more fragrances in the future. So would you mind telling us a little bit about that as well? Or maybe let's just focus totally. on these three, if you don't mind. <laughs> well, we, 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 you know, we could talk about this, uh, the, the first three, and I, I want to for sure. And I'm, I'm actually going to give, I'm going to put on, this is actually the bottle if anyone hasn't seen it yet. You can see it's very simple packaging, but very high quality Italian bottles. The good nice thing is that these are reusable. You know, we're, try, we're really trying to minimize our economic uh, and uh, environmental footprint. Keep it simple and essential. Everything recyclable, everything reusable. Um, and anyway, I'm going to spray some of this on. But okay. so after we put on, um, ap sorry, after after we release these three, um, I can put out about. Oh, I love this. I really, really, really love this fragrance. Uh, and I, you know, you can't see. I'm going to just show your viewers what I'm looking at. This is my view because I'm I'm in my cabin upstate. And it's literally just putting this fragrance on is like opening the window to this pine forest. That's outside. what it smells like. Yeah. You know? But then you got that motor oil accord, which pulls it all together, um, which is weird and fascinating. So it makes it not an office scent. It is an office scent in that, insofar as it's safe to wear in the office, but it's not an office scent because we are an indie brand and like, and we won a prize for this. So you, uh, it's it's different enough. But um, anyway, uh, after this trio of bestsellers comes along, we want to release a few others from the Sixth Sense archive that have also been requested, heavily requested. Yeah. Or, th th and the next one um, is actually gonna be an unreleased one uh, that no one's really smelled. Um, yeah. So, and that one, I will say it's by Khalees Becker and she's amazing. And I will say it's, it's, it's a gourmand leather. And it's just Ooh. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I had to put this out. I was like, this, this, out of all 27 Sixth Sense that I've done or I produced, this is my top, you know, numero uno. Um, yeah. So I got to share it with the world. I've always been a gourmand freak. You probably know that from my Wolfsbane and my Mandrake. I always, a little bit of a... Uh, Both are excellent, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and so this one is near and dear to my heart. And uh, yeah, we had to put it out. So that one's coming next. And then thereafter, you know, we'll see which is going to make the cut. You know, I'm, I would love to hear from the fans too of what they, you know, please don't be afraid to comment, email me, whatever. I want to hear from you guys, you know? Yeah, exactly. And 
uh, the thread below because I will read it. I promise you that. So, uh, <laughs> and just in case, for those, honestly, Joseph is, and again, another one of the things that we spoke about off camera. You know, not only are you sort of the curator of this collection, but you're so heavily involved. You know, you're responding to the comments, you're reading the comments. And that's one of the things that happened and that I love that happened in the previous video that I did for Six Sense Parfum is that so many people were leaving comments on which fragrance they thought would cater to their taste based on the descriptions that Carlos and I had in the video. And there was a lot of love for Ascent. There was a lot of love for 87. And I mean, Carlos and I both love, you know, Urban Tropicalia, but they're yeah. all amazing. So even when you, you know, uh, move the camera and you show it outside of the window, that's what it smells like. It smells like taking a deep lungful of nature, you know, the cypress, the hinoki wood. But like you said, I think for a lot of people, it might be very vaguely reminiscent of like an office and because it has that salty oceanic accord, but it's done so differently, you know, and it's as an indie brand, you have that level of uniqueness, which is really admirable. Yeah, it pushes it out there. But remember too, we designed this fragrance back in like 2009 or 2010. It's like more than a decade ago, yeah. about a decade ago. So, we, you know, we, we we set the tone with that. It's not like we no. were following. So exactly. if you want an original archetypal awesome office fragrance, boom, <laughs> 87. Um, and which is why, but I, I don't want to call it an office fragrance. It really is not, you know, it makes me wince a little bit because it's like, ugh, you know, like, uh, I would never do an office fragrance. I don't like offices. I think those are like horrible environments that suck the life out of people. And if you don't have to work <laughs> in an office, don't, you know? Um, but anyway, yeah. you know, it's safe for that. Let's put it that way, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, now, why the number 87? Well, that's, you have to ask uh, the designer. And okay. Mr. N. Hollywood, because he named it. Um, but I think it has to do with the year he came from Tokyo to California. Because 87, number 87, the fragrance is all about um, his memories as a kid of going from Japan to uh, um, to the Pacific Coast Highway in L.A. Uh, and, and doing road trips uh, with his father, uh, yeah. which is fascinating. So the smells of the salt air uh, along the California Highway, the motor oil, of course, from their, their jalopy. Uh, um, and of course the, the, the pines and, and the cypress. And you know, it, it, because it starts in Japan, we used a whole bunch of really interesting Japanese uh, wood accords, including uh, Hiba wood, which is a sacred wood, you know, that only grows in Japan, uh, and Suki pine, um, which is of course also unique to Japan. Uh, and Steven Nielsen is really a brilliant nose, the, the perfumer that did this one. He actually did a Madonna's fragrance. <laughs> oh, okay. All day. And then if you're, if anyone that does know the Sixth Sense collection intimately, all of them, he also did Smell, uh, which was the House of Holland fragrance from our series two from 2010, which was a very coconutty beach one, which at the time was awesome. I mean, I got a lot of, that's one I would love to put out again, but sadly we can't, it's just gone and we don't have any left in the archive, but we were getting, we were, that one we were getting asked a lot about. But so Steven Nielsen, brilliant perfumer, brilliant guy. Uh, you did a fine job with this one. Yeah. yeah. And that's another thing I forgot to bring up too. A lot of these fragrances are conceptual in nature. So you mentioned the motor oil accord and the trip from Japan and so on and so forth. And I know Ascent, for example, is I think one of the most pleasant fragrances because it has that freshly laundered, uh, you know, clothing sort of a smell. It's musky. You have that touch of incense in the background. That's really interesting, that funereal incense. So were there some <laughs> concepts that were more difficult to execute than others, either because of the inclusion of certain ingredients or just how do you tie this up into a perfume? Okay, well, one thing that was very important, um, two things I should say were very important when we were minding the creative process. Number one was not to interfere so much with the pure creative vision. We didn't want to be a marketing board that's like, hey, it should smell like this, you know? We, the idea was really to get the best out of the visionary and the best out of the perfumer. How do we do that? So what we did was first I would select all of the designers and we would basically make a mood board of all the work of the designer, runway images, concepts, ads, so on, to get the little universe of that particular designer. We would have like six of these mood boards and then we presented those to all the perfumers at Simrise or Givadon and the perfumers would volunteer based on which designer was most moving for them. So there's enthusiasm from the gate. 
And then it would be a matter of like getting, we would have the designers basically fill out these very long um, forms, basically explaining everything about what they like and what they don't like scent wise, what their favorite fragrance was, smells they love, smells they are inspiring. And then we would give them the brief and we'd say, okay, this particular collection, we're asking you to focus on memories from your childhood. And that's it. The buck stops there. We step back and then we just watch the process unfolding. And it's a lot of back and forth between the designer and the nose until they're happy with it. The one thing we wanted to ensure, the second point, is that it doesn't smell like anything. So we were really taking most of the time testing to be like, does this remind you of anything? And if it does, we went back to the drawing board. If it didn't, it's about done, as long as they're both happy, you know? And so we weren't even testing them. We would do like six months to nine months of work, of development, and then we're like, all right, it's done. Let's throw it out there and see what happens. And uh, I wouldn't do that anymore because that's like <laughs> kind of crazy and you're, you know, begging to waste money in case it doesn't do well. But those those days we did. This is again like a, a decade ago, and um, you know they got well enough received. Thank God. Uh, so we you know we wanted to just cultivate the creative process, and as you mentioned, they're conceptual. So, and then you know as a with, with a scent. Let's get back to a scent for a second here. This is a fascinating concept that the the visionary is a, a, a French designer. He's actually Canadian, uh, named Rad Hurani. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, unisex designer of Haute Couture, like legit. He shows during Haute Couture in Paris. This guy's like the real deal. I sold him in my boutique. So Rad comes up with this amazing idea where he wanted to capture the cycle of life in one breath. That was the brief for the fragrance for a chord. And he was inspired by the David Bowie song, Ashes to Ashes. You know, okay. we start as ashes and we finish as ashes. In the middle, we're alive and somehow channeling the Holy Ghost. And so the concept was very simply um, conception of life, infancy, middle age, and death. And we would, re we would represent those four key stages of life through four chords. Semen, baby powder, leather, and incense for funereal death. So you got semen for conception of life, baby powder for in, uh, for infancy, leather for middle age, and then incense for uh, your funereal death. And it's basically end to end, ashes to ashes. So br brilliant. Yeah. And Christophe Renaud, the, the, the perfumer, just did a lovely job of pulling that all together. Um, and so we made waves, of course, being an early fragrance that featured a semen accord, you know? Uh, and a lot of people were either disgusted by it and so we wanted to make sure it wasn't gross, you know, that it's was the not. Thing. No, that's... thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we went through pains that we wouldn't we didn't want anyone like vomiting, obviously. Uh, one funny thing, though, I got to tell you guys, we so we got we got invited to do a big installation at the Arnheim Mode Biennale, which is this huge fashion festival in, in the Netherlands. And we they gave us an entire room, this massive chamber to scent any way we wanted. So what we did was we took a, a scent, that particular fragrance, and we broke it down into its four components. The the semen accord, the the baby powder accord, the leather accord, and the the incense accord, and then the sum total, the fifth, the quintessence. And, that, and it was a, a black room, just with these like smell columns that we built out of black, you know, like black, uh, what was the material? It was a black shiny material. Okay. And they would just admit the smell, and that's all it was. And you'd go in and you smell the components, and then you could smell the sum total, you know, to see how in a scent came together. It was an installation that deconstructed the fragrance, basically. Yeah. What we didn't tell anyone is that the first smell is like pure semen. And so it was really funny sitting in the corner and just watching these macho dudes walk up and be like, <sighs> and just be like, <laughs> you know, like sick that smells like, great <laughs> yeah exactly it's like a it's just a blast of like, like pure semen smell which i don't even know where you would smell that but you know like so that was kind of funny and um you know it it's, cool. yeah, it's interesting because i refrain from mentioning that in my review i noticed and that yeah it's not because i i didn't get that smell necessarily but i also felt like a lot of times i think that people do judge with you know, they judge with their eyes and with their mind before they actually let their nose do the talking or the thinking. Mm -hmm. And so like, 
even if there's a fragrance, let's say, for example, that contains a cumin note, right? They might say, oh, cumin, yeah, it's associated with the smell of body odor or whatever, or yeah. if it has like musk or ambergris, oh, I don't want it to smell animalic, so I'm not gonna try. But you really need to smell the fragrance as a cogent unit in its totality, and then you understand Absolutely. that, oh wow, this smells fantastic. And for me, it was this very warm, musky, cotton, clean, incense fragrance that I love wearing. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that to your point, thank you very much, to your point, it's it's totally not gross, and right. they har the, the, the notes harmonize. That's the, at the end of the day, Mr. Renault did a phenomenal job, and that's his job as the nose, is to create that harmony where each stands alone and you can kind of pick it up, but you don't really notice it because it's this arc, you know, this arc that works, and it's it's greater than the sum of its parts. And I think it's also a mental thing knowing that there is a seam and a chord in there and knowing that you're kind of straddling the beginning and end of life in this one sort of projection that you're you're making so it was a high concept scent and a lot of people that bought it were into the fact that it's a high concept scent you know i mean and that, here's the nutty thing too not nutty necessarily and um uh just su surprising to us was that one of the main huge fan groups of people that loved a scent were none other than lesbians wow. and this is something we could not figure out we're like okay wonder why that is you know but yet lo and behold we got so much feedback from the lgbt community especially f lesbians that we were like okay amazing like hey we we're happy to have you we just didn't see that coming you know we're like wow a semen said is appealing to lesbians okay well go figure but alas you know um so yeah we th we were like a hit in that community uh you never know. That's what I'm saying. We just do our best to kind of put it together. We put it out there and then we kick back and see what happens, you know, and voila. <laughs> so it was cool. But no, again, I'm... Ascent along with 87 won Best Indie at the Fragrance Foundation Award. So it was honored. It, it definitely blew some other people away and some accomplished noses. So it wasn't, you know, it worked, thank God, you know, and it, we weren't doing it for the gross factor. We weren't doing it for the shock factor. We were doing it to try to create new, you know, realms of scent. Very, and, and, and to open people's minds about what the possibilities are. My mentor, Daryl Doe of W. Doe, once oh, told sure, me, yeah. he's a great guy, I love him. And uh, he's yeah. he's been very, very, very influential in the development of my career. He told me once, he's like, you might not want to eat a piece of garlic by itself, but in a marinara sauce, it's a spaghetti sauce, it's essential. You need it in there because, and then it works. So you can't judge a semen accord on its own, or you can't judge a cumin accord on its own, or oud. I hate oud. I think it's, I, even the nice ones, to me, it's like, <sighs> yeah. Um, but, you know, in the right fragrance, uh, I remember Killian's, I want to say Killian's, maybe Royal Oud or something, that thousand dollar bottle he did. Freaking mind blowing, you know, it worked and I would wear it. I don't know if I'd spend a thousand bucks, but you know, it, it was nice. Um, so, and you know, I threw my judgments out the window of what accords I will and won't work with, or, you know, even for fragrances that I wear about what I'm going to put on my body. Yeah. You know, so uh, because the, the, you know we've had people that are like, oh, I hate rose, and then you know I give them a scent that has that has features rose in the heart. They love it. You know they don't even know there's rose in there. It's like yeah, duh. Yeah. That's how it works, right? That's how it works. I've actually noticed that several times before, and so that's why I always say you know let your nose be the judge discover the mm. fragrance for yourself. You know, don't focus so much on the marketing and the narratives because, you know, there's somebody who has a job to do that, right? To really mm. romanticize it and make it sound so beautiful and eloquent. But ultimately it's gonna be about, do I like the way that it smells? Do I wanna wear it? And I think all of these are really great expressions of, you know, creative work. And um, I'm really excited for the next, I mean, let's focus on these three. I know I'm like jumping oh, yeah. a little bit sure. here, but I really want, people to discover Ascend number 87 and Urban Tropicalia because that is my introduction into Six Sense Parfum. I'll be honest in saying that I haven't tried the others, but these three that thank you so much for gifting me a bottle of each one, it's incredible. And uh, so I know that the original, when they were originally launched, you know, uh, mm -hmm. between 2008 and 2011, uh, they, it was a limited run. 
And I yeah. know you decided to bring them back again as a limited run, as opposed to making them more permanent. Now, is yes. there a specific rationale behind that? Yeah, well, there's a few. Firstly, when we first came out with them, we only issued either 2,000 or 3,000 bottles of each one. And that was for the whole world. And, you know, it took about a year or two for them really to sell out, you know, because uh, again, at the end of the day, they're niche, you know, they're not like, it's not like we're selling 25,000 units, like through these yeah. big box retailers. So it was a, you know, a more specific customer who's looking for something unique and not everyone's looking for something unique, but that's what we, that's who we cater to. So if you're looking for that, come our way. Also Cortana, especially my, my other brand. Um, but as well, um, we want the reason we never actually did any re-releases up until now is because I wanted to respect the fact that they were limited edition and you know, it is what it is. And so this time around with the re-releases, I have a little bit of juice left for each one. I'm pulling these out of the archive yeah. and that's it. I can't make more because two, well, two reasons, I mean, just, Jivanon and Simrise, who are our fragrance partners, have no interest in f continuing the project. They no budget for it. And I'm not going to spend tens of thousands of dollars, you know, on updating them. But th that that's the second point. We can't come up with them again unless, unless we retune the formulas because uh, they need to be re-IFRA certified. And that's just very expensive and time consuming. So that's the reason that they won't be coming at it. So this is your last chance. And this time around, instead of two or 3,000 bottles, there's only 250 and 30 mils instead of 50 mils. So they're a little bit more precious, but that's all I got left. But I promise you the juice is fine. In fact, they're better than they were because they've been macerating because they've been properly in storage, you know? So they got better. And we increased, the Urban Tropicalia is now 20%. Originally it was 18. Originally oh, it was oh, a okay. parfum, now it's a proper parfum. So you get even a little bit more. So I mean, the value I'm leveraging here is unbeatable. It's a parfum. For freaking yeah. fifty three dollars, are you kidding me? And award winning because it's part of the, the Urban Tropicalia didn't win Best Indie, but it was part of. Uh, we won a Can Golden Lion for packaging, so at least it's okay. something special. It did win in that way for packaging, even though we're not having that packaging anymore. But it's also the best seller I've ever done, and, and uh, the first fragrance I ever released. So it's special in all these ways. And, uh, you know, the, the, the packaging is essential, high quality bottles, good pumps and caps and reusable and very little of a, a, an environmental footprint and impact, yep. most importantly. And you recycle the Mylar bag and um, reuse the bottle and voila. And it's all about the juice because it's a quality <laughs> juice. And you know what? So one of my friends at oh, oh My Soul was saying the other day, she was like, I'm glad you're doing this because it's about time someone's doing affordable luxury. Everyone wants to be number one but they don't want to leverage value. And so yeah. that's what I'm trying to do here, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. They're all super affordably priced. You do have the option to sample. And so I'm going to leave all of yeah. the information down below for everybody watching at home, because I really do believe that they are three wonderful fragrances, super unique. Unlike anything that I've smelled before, there's a lot of originality and creativity in it. And I love the fact that you're re-releasing it, you're numbering them. So it really is a good collector's item. And like you said, uh, it is a limited run. So once they sell, they're done, right? And yeah, then exactly. I, 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 so please, no one bug me about, hey, can you put these out again? No, I can't. This is it, your last chance. And the other thing is, maybe you're not ready for a 30 mil bottle of a fragrance inspired by semen. Get the sample, at least you can experience it. It's only $5 and then plus a little bit of shipping to your front door. But if you buy the full size, it's it's free shipping in the US. So, you know, it, 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 you, you really can't beat the deal. Um, and I, again, I tuned it purposely for that reason. Uh, I really wanted to share uh, with people and, you know, um, yeah. So that's incredible, Joseph. Thank you so much again. You know, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on my channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll let you know when the next one is about ready. You know, um, I'm trying to get the, the next single, singular release, this masterpiece, this sweet gourmand by uh, uh, Khalees uh, Becker. Yeah, this leather gourmand by Khalees Becker. Yeah, I'm trying to get it by like late September, early October with a little bit of luck. So perfect. That would be perfect timing because leather gourmand, it seems like good for the cold weather, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I'm trying to like think about that too. We never thought about how it would play <laughs> into the season because we just kind of put them out when we felt like it. 
So yeah, we're trying to make a little more relevancy there moving forward. So but anyway, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to chat with you, my friend. Okay. And uh, you know, uh, I hope we can you know do this again pretty soon. Okay, thank you so much once again, Joseph. And of course, thank you to everybody watching at home. If you enjoyed this video, if this video uh, brought some value to your life, if you learned something new, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner and of course, make sure to enable sure. notifications by clicking on the bell. Thanks again. All of Six Sense Parfum information will be down below. Definitely make sure to check it out and we will see you in the next episode. Bye.